Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Lambda Destinations feature. This feature is very powerful and allows you to pipe the results of your Lambda function depending on whether or not it succeeded processing a message or failed processing a message. And you can send it to two different locations depending on the success or failure of the processing. So unfortunately using destinations is a little bit confusing and requires a lot of subtle configuration that you may not really understand. So I want to explain to you how it works and then show you how to set up destinations in the AWS console. So let's head over onto my whiteboard. I want to show you what we're building and then we'll head over into the console afterwards. So let's get to it. All right, everyone. So here we are on the whiteboard. Let's walk through the elements really quick that we're going to be building here. So over on the left-hand side, we have an SNS topic and the SNS topic is going to allow us to broadcast messages to it, which is going to be coupled with our Lambda handler. So every time we publish a message to our SNS topic, it is going to invoke our Lambda handler. And then our Lambda handler is going to do one of two things. In the success case, so when it successfully processes a message, it's going to send that message to a success destination SQS queue. That's this one here. And then in the case of failure, so maybe there's some kind of dependency exception in the processor or some kind of other transient issue, we're going to send a copy of that message into the failure destination queue. So this top flow is for success. This bottom flow is for failure. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this is really where a lot of people get confused using the destinations feature, and that's that destinations only works when your event source uses asynchronous invocation. So there's a couple different common services that people use to integrate with their Lambda function as a trigger. SNS is a popular one that uses asynchronous. S3 is another popular one when, when you want to trigger a notification when someone uploads a file that also uses asynchronous, so that will work. The other common one that will not work is SQS. So if you want to use an SQS queue you as your event source for your Lambda function here, the destinations feature will not work. Your Lambda function will succeed. It'll be able to process the message, but in the success case, it won't deliver to the success destination. And in the failure case, it won't deliver to the failure destination. This is where people get really, really confused because they think they have everything set up correctly, but because the method of invocation is synchronous in the SQS case, the feature basically doesn't work and it doesn't give you a good reason as to why it's not working. Um, so that's buried in the details of the AWS documentation, but I hope that helps some of you. So back to what we're going to be doing in this demonstration, I've already created the SNS topic for us and I've created these two different queues for us. We don't need to go through that. Uh, but the steps that we need to go through are first, we're going to create our Lambda function. Second, we're going to attach our SNS trigger to our Lambda function. Third, we're going to add our destinations, so the success and failure destinations, and then we're going to test everything out. I'll show you exactly how it works, and hopefully by the end, you'll have a good understanding of how destination works in real life. So let's head over into the console now and get started. All right, everyone, so here we are in the AWS console. I just wanted to show you the resources that I've already created so that you can understand before we hop into creating that Lambda function. All right, so here is the SNS topic that we're going to be using here. It's the publisher topic. Uh, there's a small configuration that I made to this topic that has to do with the delivery retry policy. And everything else is just vanilla. It's default. I didn't change anything except for this. So if you look at the retry policy here, I set the number of retries to zero. By default, it's three. And the reason I changed this from zero to three is because in the failure case, which I'm going to show you a little bit later on, uh, SNS will continuously try to invoke your Lambda function up to whatever your number of retries is here. And then after that number of times, so three, if you leave it as default, then it's going to send it to the failure destination. It takes a little bit of time to send it. So I just wanted to skip that so I can show you the result a lot faster. Everything else is completely default in this topic. I didn't change any of the other settings. All right. So over on the other side, now we have our two queues. We have the success queue here and we have the failure queue here. You can see there's no messages in here. I didn't do anything with these. Again, purely default. Um, these are just normal standard queues, not FIFO queues, although it doesn't really matter um, either way. All right. So let's do step number one now, which is to create our Lambda function. So I'm going to the Lambda section of the console. We're just going to click on create function here. We're going to do author from scratch. And I think I called this like Lambda handler and that's fine. We're going to use Python, but the language doesn't really matter here. This will work for any uh, language you want to use. Click on create function. Um, we're going to need to, well, actually we don't need to modify the IAM permissions when we're setting up the triggers because it's going to handle it all for us. If you do this through the console, however, if you're doing this through like CDK or something like that, you're going to want to know of the permissions that you need. So I'm going to show you how it works when we add the triggers. 
All right, so we just created our function here. Now our next step is to add that SNS topic, the publisher SNS topic as a trigger. Um, so we're gonna click on add trigger here and we're gonna go to SNS and there we go. Let's just find the publisher, there it is. And you can see here, Lambda will add the necessary permissions for SNS to invoke your Lambda function from this trigger. You can learn more here, but let me show you what it does after it successfully creates it. It's gonna add a resource policy onto this Lambda function. You can see it successfully created it here. But if we look into the configuration under permissions now, I may have to refresh the page actually. Oh, no, I don't. So you can see here under resource policy based statements, and if we just refresh this to make sure it's up to date, you can see we have a statement here here, the principle is SNS and the condition is we're basically saying SNS now has the ability to invoke our Lambda function, which is what you need to do to set up the trigger successfully. And if you click on the statement ID, you can see like it's referring to our publisher SNS topic. So if you're doing this through CDK or Terraform or CloudFormation, you're going to need to give your SNS topic the ability to invoke your Lambda function. Um, okay, so that's it for step two. We created the trigger now. Uh, let's go and create the destination now. And that's pretty straightforward to do. You're just gonna want to go to add destination here. We actually need to do this two times, one for the failure case and one for the success case. All right, so we're gonna leave it on asynchronous invocation. Streaming is for if you wanna use AWS Kinesis as your event source, but we don't here. Uh, so let's do the failure first. So for the destination type, we want it to be our SQS queue. So let's put in now our failure destination queue. And okay, it's gonna also do a permission, um, IAM permission thing for us. So you can see your function's execution role doesn't have permission to send the result to the destination. By clicking save, we'll attempt to add the permission to the role for you. Uh, since we're using SQS for our destination here, it's gonna give our Lambda function the IAM permission SQS send message. If you use something like SNS topic as your destination, so you wanna send to an SNS topic uh, as a result of your function invocation, you need like the publish message permission. Or if you're using a Lambda function, you need the invoke uh, function permission. So depending on the source that you're using, the permission that you need to attach is different. So I'm gonna show you what it does for SQS, but just keep that in mind if you're using some of these other ones here. All right, so let's click on SQS and okay, failure destination, that's good. Click on save. Let's do both of them really quick and then I'll show you the permissions that got added. And you can see it takes a little bit extra because it needs to add that permission to talk to the IAM service, configure your uh, role and the new policy and everything. So I don't think this will take too long, but this is seeming bizarre. Okay, there we go. Um, let's add the second one really quick. So same thing, asynchronous, and this time we want it to be on success. So let's do SQSQ here, and then on success, we're gonna put the success queue, telling us the same thing. Let's click on save, hopefully this time will be faster, probably not. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you now the permission that it's adding, it should be that SQS send message permission. And I think after this, I do need to refresh the page because when I did this previously, it didn't show up right away. One of the quirks of using the AWS console. So I'm just pressing F5 right now to refresh the page really quick. And let's go to, okay, so here's the destinations. Now you can see it's configured. We're under the configuration and then destination section. If you ever wanna delete this or edit how it works, you can just click on this and then go to remove edit. Or if you wanna add a new one, or you can click on that button to add a new one. Um, but let's see the permissions that it added for us. So I'm gonna click on permissions. And you can see now, if you go to under resource summary and you click here, we can see we have uh, Amazon SQS, one action, two resources. And we have under the success destination queue, the ability to send the message and the failure destination queue, also the ability to send the message. So this is looking good. We're actually ready to test this out right now. So let's go and try this. So first we're gonna test out the success function and the success case is pretty easy. If we just look at our code really quick, this is, it's not raising an exception. It's not doing anything. It's just kind of returning a 200 okay. This is the success case. So as long as your function doesn't throw an exception, then and it will be considered a success. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what you return here. So this by default, if we take it as is, it will result in a success. So one small thing that I wanted to point out before we, we test this out using the success flow is 
a lot of people like to test out their function directly here in the console, the Lambda section of the console. They just create a test event like here, you know, do something here and then, you know, go to save and then they click on test a couple times. Okay, this succeeded, awesome, right? In our case, you would think that this is gonna send the message to our SQS queue because this was a success case. That is not the case. When you use the test feature, it's invoking your function synchronously. Remember what we said in the beginning, if you invoke your function synchronously, destinations will not work. If you invoke it asynchronously or use an event source that uses asynchronous invocation, it will work. So let me prove it to you. I'm gonna click on this like five times, right? These are all successful invocations. If we go into our SQS topic or SQS queue rather and click on refresh here, nothing's happening. Right? We're not seeing any of those messages in our success queue. This number should be going up to five or whatever. So that's a little quirk that you should be aware of. It will not work if you're using that test function. Uh, so let's just do it the normal way now to show you how this works when you're using asynchronous invocation via the SNS topic. So let's go to our SNS topic over here. So this is the publisher topic that we have wired up to our Lambda. We're gonna go publish message. We're gonna put something in here, success message, success body, and then scroll down, publish message. That should have hit our Lambda function now. Let's go into our queue and see if it successfully piped this to the success destination queue. So when I refresh, we should see this as one. All right, and there we go. This is eventually consistent, so that's why it didn't show up right away. And so you can see we have one message in our queue here. So let's go look at what this is. I'm gonna click on the queue, send and receive messages. We're gonna go to pull for messages, and then it's gonna pull the queue. Here's the message that we just got. Let's open this sucker up, and this is a giant monstrosity. Let's just take this into another tool so that we can look at this a little nicer. Uh, this this website's very handy, by the way, jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com, just to, to get a nice view of your content here. Uh, scrolling down, and okay, so what do we have here? And for some reason, it's not actually showing the full message. There we go. Oh, that was strange. It wasn't showing the full thing here. Anyways, this is what gets returned or gets put into the queue in the case of success. So what do we have here? You can see the condition was success. Then if you look in the, the uh, body of the request payload, you can see what did we send via the SNS topic? Well, we sent a message with a success subject and then the message was success body. So if in your case, you know, usually people have like a big JSON object that goes into the body of their message, that would be right here and um, nothing really else to see in the message here. You can poke around this and just kind of see what's there, but that's it for the success flow. All right, so let's go and test out the failure flow now. And what I wanna do is go back into our Lambda function. We're gonna modify the code really quick. And instead of it returning a success, I'm just gonna say raise exception. Oh, raise exception. And then we're just gonna say something bad happened. All right, so let's deploy that. And okay, so we successfully deployed it. So let's go test this out again. I'm gonna publish another message to our SNS topic and let's see if all this worked. Um, okay, publish another message and this will be uh, for failure. So I'm gonna say failure and then failure. Actually, I'll put in like a, a JSON object so you can see what this looks like. So let's say reason and then say failure. Um, yeah, that's fine. Let's publish this message now. And okay, so these were successfully published. So let's go back into our SQS queue. Now we should see, let's close all this stuff out. We should see in our queue, in our failure queue, um, a quantity of messages being one. And sometimes this does take a little while. So if you leave it as default with uh, three retry attempts for your uh, SNS topic, this can take like several minutes for the message to show up. Since I changed it to zero, it should be pretty quick, if not instant. So let's refresh. Okay, it's taking a little bit. Let's just give this a second here so that it completes the retry. And if it takes too long, I'll just fast forward it for you. All right, so this took about like one or two minutes to show up, but you can see it finally showed up as one here for the failure destination queue. So let's open this up really quick and see what's in there. We should see a payload that resembles what we published. So let's go to send and receive and then go to pull for messages and then open this guy up. I'm just going to copy all this again and we're going to use that tool again to see this thing. Let's replace this. Okay. 
And if we scroll down or open this up a little bit, we should see some details. And again, this tool is acting a little bit wonky. There we go. Uh, so you can see here under, well, first of all, you can see our subject was failure. And then here's what it looks like when you have the JSON body in there. So it gives you that message. And then at the bottom, you can see response context. We have the status code. We can see that the function error was unhandled. And you can actually see the stack trace in here as well if you need that. And also the error message from the exception. So hopefully that shows you how to use Lambda destinations and clears up some of the confusion for how it works. Hope you found this video useful. If you enjoy Lambda, you wanna learn more, check out my course, AWS Lambda Practical Guide. I'll put that down in the description section below as well. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.